All right, I took out the attenuator because um, it was kind of clunky when I was turning it. I wanted to like lube it up. Um, and so I took out some screws and this top, this top comes off of it. So this thing is just solid, solid metal, a big box of solid metal and only one way to get into it. So I was a little bit worried about it, but you take a couple of screws right around the top and this, this lifts out, okay? And we'll watch that a little bit later. But inside are some plastic wheels. And when you rotate the um, knob, the, these levers, watch the levers. This one, this one goes down. And I go another click. That one goes back. And this one goes down. Another click. This one goes down. These are, yeah. So it's kind of a weird... Not, not exactly binary, but you get the idea. Um, and uh, so this is just a big box of cams. So nothing special in there except for the, all these cams. You go all the way and they're all set to that one side so you can clock it correctly. So what do those cams do? Well, they operate on this piece here. So there's an input and an output on the attenuator. And then inside are... Uh, individual little compartments that have each attenuator and those cams go in and 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 actuate those attenuators are inside these these uh these cans here let's zoom in a little bit um so i took this lid off and inside there's a plastic piece here that slides in and out so the the cam the cam will slide this in and out well what does that do well there's a pc board under here a gold plated pc board and this just has a contact on it. So as it slides up, it, it shorts out the switch. So this is just a sliding switch. So th normally the um, switch is engaged and the signal would just go straight through. Whenever the switch is in the up position, then it takes a different path. And there's a, uh, a resistor here, a resistor on the board, and another resistor. So it's a Pi attenuator, three resistors. And so you're just turning on and off these these uh, sections here. So I don't think there's any maintenance to be done here. I did put some oil on the shaft here to make it spin more freely, but I'm going to put this back together and uh, call it a day. Um, but yeah, I'll show you some close-up photographs here of what's going on in this section. So there are two screws. This is this is silver plated and it's obviously very very tarnished. Um, these screw here hold in the PC board assembly, and these screws here hold in the uh, uh, shield uh, over here. So it requires one little star washer and one little nut. And let's get the nut started. Yeah, there we go. All right. So that's all there is going on here. So tighten the screw down for this section. There we go. All right. So um, yeah. So this is uh, how how WaveTech built the built the attenuator, and I can now just set this in here, and it's all clocked correctly. And then there's these short little stubby screws that that uh, put it all back together again. So let me do that. All right, so it's interesting. This looks like WaveTech designed and built this themselves. And uh, this is a fairly old product. And I, I imagine that they probably found themselves spending a lot of time and money on these attenuator assemblies. So um, this is also out of a microwave, uh, out of a, um, uh, a WaveTech microwave type of product. And uh, this is a DC to 18 gigahertz um, attenuator. This one is only up to 500 megahertz, so much easier to design this one. So I think um, they decided that for the higher frequency ranges and stuff, they would just buy a whole attenuator from a company that knows how to do that. Uh, so this one is, is by a Midwest Microwave, a big brand name. And this is a nice step attenuator from DC to 18 gigahertz, also like a Pi network. And uh, this one also, this one's kind of like a, um, 
a, a revolving, uh, a revolver, a gun, a revolver. There's like chambers, and you're like picking which chamber uh, goes through. So here's the here's the input, here's the output. So that's the the chamber, and then you like load whichever attenuator you want uh, as you turn this thing around. So this uh, this is a really nice really nice unit. This one goes from zero to sixty dB in ten dB steps. So. Uh, uh, thing I use all the time on the bench. So anyway, I think this one's uh, working pretty good now. Um, as you spin it around, it also has a micro switch on it and a little flag here that says, okay, you've gone all the way to one side. So somehow it knows you're on the last one, which is the um, plus 10 dBm. So usually the way these instruments work, I haven't looked at the schematic yet, is you can go all the way to zero dBm and then getting plus 10 dBm is actually quite tricky. And so this switch probably turns on a amplifier. So you're not without amplifier and then on the last range you've turned on an extra 10 dB amp to get you up to plus 10 dBm. Um, so yeah, there you go. So I think this one is good enough and I'll put it back in the instrument and uh, start working on the rest of it, start putting those modules back on. Now I've uh, been away for 10 days on a vacation, so I have to remember where I left off, but uh, I can always go back and look at the videos I filmed. Yeah, let's, uh, let's keep it going.